And, uh, it's really exciting to be here with you uh, back in this format. We're also doing our in-person in the evenings, and I'm grateful that we have both options for people to participate in. Uh, this week, we're going to begin with exploring our practice for the week. We're going to then uh, situate our scripture passage a little bit, and then we'll finish off by uh, reading the passage together if there's time, and then uh, you can head into your groups to chat. So as we uh, continue to explore following Jesus through uncharted territory, this week I'd like for us to consider the practice of compassion. Now, my hope, of course, is that we not only have an understanding of what compassion means, but that we've experienced compassion in our lives, both the giving and receiving of compassion. And I think at the same time, compassion is one of those practices or emotions that we can, we can know in many different ways. So I thought I'd begin by uh, unpacking compassion for us a little bit. So what is compassion? Well, among uh, emotion researchers, compassion is defined as the feeling that arises when you are confronted with another's suffering and feel motivated to relieve that suffering. So the feeling that arises when you're confronted with another suffering and feel motivated to relieve that suffering. Now, compassion is, is deeply rooted in human nature. Uh, it has a biological basis in the brain and in the body. And a growing body of evidence suggests that at our core, we have a natural capacity for compassion. And when compassion is experienced, it, it overrides selfish concerns and motivates selfless behavior. There's also different orientations of compassion. There are three. There's receiving compassion. There's self-compassion and compassion for others. And all three are important, and each perpetuates a holistic expression of compassion. Now, while we have this natural capacity for compassion, it's also a trait that we can develop, a trait that can be practiced. As people who are learning to follow Jesus, uh, we can explore the practice of compassion from a Christian context. In, uh, in the book that some of us have been referencing over the past few weeks, uh, Spiritual Disciplines Handbook, uh, the author, Calhoun, she defines compassion a lot like the emotion researchers describe it. But she centers it within a Christian context, and I find that helpful. So she defines compassion as feeling with and for others, as well as extending mercy and help in extravagantly practical ways. Compassion is part and parcel of sharing in God's heart for an aching and wounded world. So similar, but a little bit different. I thought we'd take a look at some of the differences for a moment. This with and for, with and for. There's a deep sense of connectedness in this definition of compassion, isn't there? One might even imagine using the word communion here for with and for. Communion as in the act of sharing. Communion as in gathered around God's table with all of who we are. Our joys, our thanksgivings, our burdens, our struggles, all of it. The other part of this definition, which I find really intriguing, is 
extending mercy and help in extravagantly practical ways, extravagantly practical. This made me think almost of uh, this being a rebuttal to the world's criticism of the response thoughts and prayers in times of trouble. We can hear that criticized a lot. Now, don't get me wrong. We are a praying people and thoughts and prayers is definitely a valid and necessary response to struggle. And compassion also prompts and brings us to the place of action. So the idea of extravagantly practical, practical, two words that almost don't go together. And I wonder if that's almost the point. Because to know what might be extravagantly, so to go above and beyond, practical, really helpful in any given act of compassion is to know the person or the people and their experience, right? The with and the for, it's a joining. Calhoun also describes this elsewhere in the chapter on compassion as love that has hands and feet. So that practical component. Finally, uh, the last piece I'll look at here is uh, compassion is part and parcel of sharing in God's heart for an aching and wounding world. So the compassion that we live into is rooted in God's heart, period. We live compassionately because God has extended compassion to us, which we see most concretely in Christ. God knows that we will experience ache and pain, and God promises to be with us. Learning to follow Jesus is learning to share in God's heart, is learning to live with compassion. So when we experience difficult things, compassion is a practice we can live into and into all three orientations of compassion, right? Receiving compassion, self-compassion, and compassion for others. As we make our way through the unchartered territory we're currently experiencing, the practice of compassion is one of our navigation tools. Compassion allows us to connect with ourselves and others not through competition or perfection, but through shared vulnerability and authenticity. I think compassion calls us to really see ourselves and others. And compassion is a practice that Jesus lives out and calls us to live out as well. And so the scripture passage that uh, you're invited to explore today is from uh, the gospel according to St. John uh, 21 to 18. And the focus is on Mary Magdalene's encounter with the risen Jesus. Now, a few things about this passage before uh, we listen to it together. Uh, it takes place at the beginning of what the followers of Jesus thought was the end. Jesus had been crucified, his body sealed in a tomb, it was over. And followers of Jesus, they were leaving Jerusalem, as we heard a few weeks ago uh, when we encountered the uh, Emmaus story. And uh, they were leaving Jerusalem, figuring that there was nothing left to stay for. And the disciples, those who were closest with Jesus, well, they were hiding in a room, afraid for their own lives. One of the things we'll see in this passage is that there's a lot of emotion at play. Uh, and also, this is the first count, account of the risen Jesus revealing himself. So I'll invite us just to listen to this passage as I read it. I know you've likely read it already on your own, uh, but we'll hear it together 
before we go into our breakout groups. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood, weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabone, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not touch me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So I'm going to invite you to uh, head into your discussion groups, uh, thinking about some of the things that we've uh, learned and about compassion and uh, exploring this passage a little bit uh, to uh, see where and how we see compassion lived out in it.